and welcome back to my channel. I'm Andrea for those who are new here and for those who are coming back. Hello again! It's so nice to see you. Um, today is a video that I have been wanting to do for a long time. I would have liked to have done it sooner but I was still doing the research for this video when I started my channel. Um, so I've finally done the research for the most part. Um, enough research to feel confident to do this video. Um, and that is why I stopped using parabens in my makeup, um, bath and body products, um, pretty much anything that has parabens in it, I gave that up. Um, and so this is why, um, and there's a bit of a backstory to this. I do have research, which I will get to in a little bit. I made this decision several years ago. At the time, we were starting to see a number of articles popping up on websites and in health magazines talking about the dangers of parabens. Um, and I'm putting that in air quotes because I'll get to that in a minute. At first I thought, you know, oh well, this is just typical being alarmist, you know, as a lot of health magazines and stuff sometimes do, and I'm bad, I tend to ignore a lot of that stuff. And I thought, you know, maybe it's in some of my products, but it's not in all of them. So, you know, a little bit won't hurt me. And I went into my makeup bag and I looked through everything and literally every cosmetic I owned had parabens in it. Which now, this is not a surprise to anyone, um, because we kind of know this now. But at the time, I was kind of shocked. And so I thought, okay, well that, that does seem like a lot of products that I'm using. Um, this was also when they started um, talking about trying to avoid sodium lauryl sulfates or sodium lauryl sulfides. And again, it was those were in my toothpaste, in my shampoo, in my soap, in my body wash. And I thought, okay, that's, that's a lot. So between the sodium lauryl sulfates or SLSs and the parabens, it was in everything in my bathroom. And that was kind of the first red flag to raise in my mind. And so I thought, okay, well I'm going to try to find products without those ingredients. Um, and I just kind of made the decision that I was just going to not use anything with parabens and anything with sodium lauryl sulfates. It seemed like companies were also pretty quick to start putting out products with that, without sulfates and sulfides, so that became easier, but the paraben issue became difficult. Finding makeup without parabens was a huge struggle, and finding good makeup, because in 2007, 2008, the only companies that were paraben free were typically found in health food stores. They were really small companies, small businesses starting up. Um, and the quality just wasn't the same, like the eyeshadows weren't as pigmented, the blushes weren't as pigmented, the foundations just weren't that good. And this was at the time when I still had very severe cystic acne, so I wasn't wearing a lot of foundations anyway. Um, but yeah, it just seemed like this is something that I'm going to have to work on. So fast forward a bit, now we're starting to see more companies formulate the products without parabens, um, but it still can be kind of expensive. The drugstore brands don't always do that. Every now and then I get lucky, and I kind of think I talked about this in the 40 questions about beauty tag. Um, every now and then certain drugstore brands, I get lucky. Rimmel has a few products, a few mascaras and eyeliners that don't have parabens in them. Um, I've found some NYX products recently that don't have parabens. Um, they probably have some other chemical preservative that I don't know. In another five or ten years we might find out those aren't so great for us either. So this is not like, like I'm not trying to act high and mighty. I'm not trying to say my way is better than anyone else's. I'm definitely not telling anyone who watches this video to dump your drugstore products. Not at all. Um, that's not the point of this video. I just wanted to put out a video that explained why I wasn't using them um, and maybe educate 
the rest of you about why people think, why scientists think parabens probably aren't the best thing for us, um, so that you can then make an informed decision. So as I've been watching more YouTube videos, um, you know, I see a lot of really amazing products and I want to get really excited about them. And then I look at the ingredients and nine times out of ten, or maybe eight times out of ten, um, it has parabens in it or um, SLSs. Um, and so it's like, okay, I guess I can't use that one, which I guess probably saves me a lot of money in the long run. Um, but again, like I was saying, it'd be nice if more drugstore brands did this. So like Tarte is an example of a really great brand that is excellent when it comes to the ingredients that they use. Um, and I love knowing that I can go up to the Tarte display in Ulta or Sephora and just take my pick and I don't have to read the ingredients. I can just swatch it, buy it, enjoy it. Um, but Tarte isn't cheap. So it's not like I can go and just raid the display. Um, and so that's, an, that's kind of the problem that I seem to be noticing now is that more companies are starting to do the all natural, but as a result, the, the prices aren't really coming down, even though there's more options, the prices are still staying pretty high. Um, the quality at least is getting better, but it'd be nice to see the prices come down a little bit. Um, so as I've been getting excited about some of these products, I thought, well, when I first made this decision, I really was just going based on what these websites and health magazines were saying, and I wasn't actually reading the actual research. And then, you know, light bulb moment, gee, Andrea, you're going to school at a major research university, you have an entire research library at your disposal, and you know how to use the search engines and the databases. You should look this up. So I looked up research on parabens. So summing all this up, because I'm not going to like read through everything, or this video would be massive. If you have specific questions about what I was finding in the research, just put them in the comment section below. So what I noticed in doing the research is that the studies are not really conclusive one way or the other. They can't say that parabens absolutely are not harmful at all. They haven't been able to categorically prove that. But they also can't say they are like going to kill us or something. Um, and again, disclaimer, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, I'm just a YouTuber who's interpreting the data. Um, so they're not like saying that everyone should ban parabens from their lives. It's nothing that extreme. Um, but what they were noticing is that Parabens can mimic estrogen, and they can also affect the way that estrogen is formulated in the body. Um, and it can also affect the thyroid. Um, and as someone with polycystic ovarian syndrome um, and a thyroid condition, it just seemed like, as someone who's not in the best hormonal health, to be using products that might possibly, and again, I'm like, underlying bold might possibly, I'm not making any claims here because the scientists aren't really making any claims either, but they're suggesting that it could affect certain hormone levels in the body. Um, some of the studies were saying that it could lead to a, um, lead to problems with reproductive health in young men. Um, and it could cause early puberty in girls. We still have a ways to go in order to monitor kind of lifetime exposure to parabens. Um, and because it's makeup and because it's beauty products, they're not studying it as much as they could be. So yeah, it just seemed like I felt validated that I had made the right choice for me. As someone who has the kind of health problems that I'm dealing with. It just seemed, after reading the research, like I really had made the right decision um, to avoid those ingredients. So, disclaimer, um, two disclaimers. Number one, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, so don't take anything I've said as like 
gospel or scientific fact because I'm just interpreting these really scientific journal articles as best as my very arts and humanities brain can process. Um, which is why I'm not going to sit here and say you absolutely should give up parabens because I can't make that claim. Um, there are also certainly products that I use that maybe don't have parabens but probably have other um, chemicals that I shouldn't be consuming. Um, propylene glycol is another not so great um, ingredient, but I know that's in a few of my products. Um, and I have products with FDMC dyes, um, which are anytime it says red lake number whatever or yellow number whatever, um, those are FDMC dyes. Um, I need to do more research into those. Um, but again, the reason I went, f the reason I dropped parabens from my products is because while I was noticing that some ingredients were in some, parabens were the one thing that was in all of them. Um, sometimes multiple parabens, because there are six or s six or seven. Um, yeah, there's. Methyl paraben, ethyl paraben, propyl paraben, isopropyl paraben, butyl paraben, um, isobutyl, benzyl. So there's seven parabens, um, and then there's also phthalates, which is another thing that I'm probably going to have to give up. But phthalates are in fewer products and I the main thing they're in is are in anything with fragrance it's what makes the fragrance last longer on the body um, and I don't wear fragrances that regularly anyway so it's kind of like a cost-benefit decision you know risk analysis decision like I don't know it's just parabens were the one thing that was in everything so it just made sense to drop that and then be a bit more choosy and selective about other things. Um, oh, one thing that the articles did talk about is that there is an acceptable daily intake for parabens, but what none of the articles talked about, um, and this is why I really would love for them to do more research, is there's no way for the average cons for the average consumer to measure what their daily intake of parabens is because products just have that, like. Par methyl paraben will be on the um, ingredient list, but it won't say how much. And so if it's in all of your products and you're using them all on a daily basis, like there's no way to calculate what our total daily intake is. And so that's kind of an issue for me. Um, but yeah, this video is getting long and rambly and I'm going to have a heck of a time editing this. Um, but like I said, this is mostly to just, I don't know, fun random science facts for you, um, as well as to help you understand a bit more about why I talk about products not having parabens and why that's exciting for me and why I dropped them in the first place. Um, I really hope this video has made sense. I feel like I'm going to get to editing this and be like, crap, now I have to film a new video for Friday. <laughs> Um, so I'll probably put this up anyway, um, but yeah, so that's, this is what it is. Um, if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments below. Um, if you also are like me and avoid parabens, um, give this video a thumbs up or let me know in the comments, um, so I know I'm not alone. Um, if you have recommendations for other companies, um, I can do that. I was going to do that, but this video has gotten way too long. Um, so I might do that in a future video, just some of my favorite products and companies. Um, and I can try to link a few below. There is one in particular, um, Laranim Cosmetics, which is really great. And they're actually what I'm wearing on my eyes right now, um, minus the mascara. I hope you enjoyed this rambly video. I hope you learned something. Um, even if it's just learning more about me, because, you know, that's good too sometimes. Um, so I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you all soon in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.